Hi, and welcome to lesson four here in our organic chemistry unit. In lesson three, we talked about oxygen containing functional groups. Here in lesson four, we're going to talk about nitrogen containing functional groups. To begin this discussion, I decided to go with five different examples of one of my favorite types of organic molecules, which are proteins. We don't really have a lot of time to talk about what proteins do, but we can say that they are the things that make life possible in a lot of ways. What I've got here are antibodies, hemoglobin, insulin, adenylate cyclase, and glutamine synthetase. You probably know what some of these proteins already do in order to help keep you alive, and you can probably figure out the rest if you're really interested by going to Google. The reason I'm showing you all of these is because proteins are made out of amino acids, and amino acids have this fundamental structure, and you can see over on the left, we've got a nitrogen atom. Amino acids are organic molecules that have nitrogen-containing functional groups. Let's go in and talk about nitrogen and its role in organic chemistry. Let's start by talking about nitrogen as an element. It's another really common element that we find in functional groups, and it can replace hydrogen or carbon in the hydrocarbon, just like oxygen could. But unlike oxygen, nitrogen can make three bonds. So this is an image of liquid nitrogen, which is very cold, and you can see that nitrogen has five valence electrons, which means it's looking to make three bonds to complete its valence which is why we wind up getting nitrogen as an element in different kinds of functional groups. So as a reminder, we've already talked about five different examples of functional groups, and we've been using reference table R, which shows us the functional groups that we need to be aware of for the purpose of this course. Functional group number six, our first nitrogen-containing functional group, are the amines. And in amine, we have a nitrogen that's bonded to one, two, or three carbons, and as a result, is additionally bonded to two, one, or zero hydrogens. As always, with any functional group, we're going to change the name of the molecule. And the name change for amines is to take the suffix of the molecule and add amine to it. Additionally, the number of the carbon with the amine attached is stated in front of the name if there's more than one place where we could put that amine in that molecule. The example that's given to you on reference table R is one propanamine where the amine is attached to the first carbon in what would otherwise be a propane molecule. And the example that I'm showing you here is ethanamine where the amine is attached to one of the two carbons in what would otherwise be an ethane molecule, which is why we don't have to number the carbons in ethanamine. In terms of amine fun facts, there are two that I really think you should be aware of. The first is that there's an unshared pair of electrons on the nitrogen in an amine. And so as a result, that can easily form a coordinate covalent base with a proton, making the amine a molecule that can accept a proton, thereby meeting the definition of a Bronsted-Lowry base. Amines are kind of the reverse of carboxyl groups from our previous presentation in that sense. The other is that amines, along with carboxyl groups, are the characteristic functional groups of all amino acids, which are the building blocks of different proteins. You can see on this diagram of a generalized amino acid structure that we've circled the amine group over on the left. So this chart shows all of the 20 amino acids that are found in organisms. And you can see that in each case, we have an amine and a carboxyl group. And then we have different types of atoms that are coming off of the middle carbon in the amino acid. It's pretty interesting that 20 different amino acids are all we need to make all of the living things that we see around us. And if you find that thing as interesting as I do, I encourage you to consider biology as something that might be worth your time studying. But for right now, we have to move on. Our other nitrogen-containing functional group are the amides. The structure of an amide is a carbon that's double bonded to an oxygen and single bonded to a nitrogen. Amides change the name of the parent molecule by changing the suffix to amide. The example that's shown on reference table R is propanamide. Notice that we don't have to number the amide because it can only occur on a terminal carbon. The example that I've shown you here is ethanamide, which is an amide that has two carbons in the chain. In terms of amide fun facts, to come back to proteins, the peptide bonds that are formed when you connect amino acids together in a protein are examples of amide bonds. You can see the connection of two different amino acids in this diagram, and you can see the amide that forms, the peptide bond, which is easily the most important amide bond that we find in biological systems. If you have any questions about amines or amides or any of the things that we've discussed in this presentation, now is the time to write them down before we wrap up. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of nitrogen-containing functional groups. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can identify the functional groups and families that we've discussed in this presentation, amines and amides. And also make sure that you can name molecules that demonstrate the functional groups that we've shown in this presentation. If you can do both those things, you're doing great. 
If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have. You can always leave them for me in the comments below the video and you can always get in touch with me. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.